Now, given how busy mainstream corporate media is covering stories such as 10 ways to know your bikini wax has gone wrong, I can see how this story might have gotten missed. Last month, BioRx published a brain damage inducing preprint study on the accumulation of COVID spike protein in the brain. The researchers confirmed their results both in live mice as well as in cadavers of dead humans. The study was titled SARS-CoV-2 Spike Protein Accumulation in the Skull Meninges Brain Access Potential Implications for Long-Term Neurological Complications in Post-COVID-19. That's a long title and sure doesn't sound good. The researchers explained their disturbing findings. Our results reveal the accumulation of the spike protein in the skull marrow, brain meninges, and brain parenchyma. The injection of the spike protein alone caused cell death in the brain, highlighting a direct effect on brain tissue. Furthermore, we observed the presence of spike protein in the skull of deceased long after their COVID-19 infection, suggesting that the spike's persistence may contribute to long-term neurological symptoms. Now, pay particular attention to how they said injection of the spike protein alone, meaning without the virus. So, the real mystery is what caused the damaging brain injuries that researchers found, even in subjects that were not COVID infected? What could be the potential source of the spike protein? Paging experts, experts to the mortuary, please. The researchers went on to say, however, even without detectable virus RNA in the brain parenchyma, signs of widespread immune activation could be detected. The lack of evidence for the viral presence and especially viral replication in the brain led to the hypothesis that virus shed protein circulating in the bloodstream may promote an inflammatory response independent of direct viral infection of the affected organs, including the brain. Notably, the highly uh, immunogenic spike protein also used in COVID-19 vaccines might be a candidate for triggering infection independent effects. Now, that doesn't sound good, right? Other studies have concluded that free spike, such as produced by the injections, can cross the blood-brain barrier. But this study found another different way for spike to get into the brain, through cerebral bone marrow. Being extra diligent and actual practitioners of the science, the researchers dyed the spike protein and found that it accumulates in lots of humanized mouse organs including, but not only, the brain. You'll see all the wonderful places when you look at the study. Now, to appease the skeptics and you two, basically, you know, the same group, the researchers were diligent and careful. Their preprint is 25 pages long and includes 115 footnoted references and nine linked videos. There you go. You want evidence? You got it. In closing, I've been told by my critics over the past three years on and on that I'm not a medical expert. Fair enough. First off, I don't claim to be one, but I can read. And after reading the study, even with my limited remedial medical knowledge, I don't think that spike-induced brain damage is a good thing overall. But given there are some of you out there who believe 2 plus 2 equals 5 and men can give birth, this might explain a few things. Hmm. Anyway, I thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Please post any comments you have in the comment section. You can always follow me on my Rumble on my Locals account. If you haven't yet subscribed to my Rumble or my Locals, please do so. Because occasionally, occasionally, and I don't know why, YouTube gets a little pissed off and you're no longer, poof, you're not there because they don't agree with it. Maybe they just got a little bit too much spike or brain damage and whatever it could be. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.